So yesterday on the show, I covered a, uh, there was a segment about somebody I know who was exposed to COVID at their work. They work in a department store, uh, a, a home department store, and we're going to be going into all the details here. And uh, he was exposed to COVID. And uh, when he recommended that the customers wear masks, he was told to, quote, tread lightly. And uh, we're going to go and get all the ins and outs of his story. This is a friend of mine from my days in the, the Pittsburgh comedy scene. Uh, he's a very funny comedian, and he's got quite a story to share. So please welcome to the show, Mr. Zach Funk. What's up, Zach? Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Dude, of course, man. So you saw the segment that I did yesterday where I went over some of your posts. Yeah. Um, but let's uh, let's kind of really comb through what happened here. So so first of all, you know, via your permission, the store in question is a Lowe's. Yeah, which, it's a uh, Lowe's in the Pittsburgh area. I won't specify which one, but yeah. Sure, sure. So a Lowe's in the Pittsburgh area, which um, Lowe's the department store, not the movie theater, just so we're clear. <laughs> um, and um, you. So let's start at the beginning. This was deemed an essential service, which we talked off mic about how, well, in some ways that makes sense because this is a department store. If somebody if somebody's fridge starts work stops working, that's significant. I mean, you, you need your fridge to work during a pandemic, especially if, if somebody's, you know, it makes sense why certain parts of Lowe's would be open. But did it make sense for everything to be open? Not at all, no. And and that was one of the things I addressed. Like as soon as the um, it looked like the pandemic was going to be like a real serious thing, um, you know, in like mid early March, uh, I already was like talking to management, trying to figure out, you know, what are we doing to prepare for this? How are we, you know, when other businesses started to close, I said, are we planning to close? Are we going to, you know, limit services? Because like you said, you need a water heater or a fridge. Um, I've worked in departments like paint or flooring. You don't need to decide, you know what, I want to put new carpet in while the world is on fire with the pandemic. So I asked about that and everything I was told was just, uh, well, so as far as we know, we're going to be doing business as usual, but we'll be watching things and, you know, being careful and all that good stuff. We got Uh, profits to worry about. Exactly. We we uh-huh. hope you stay healthy, but we got profits to worry about. And and if you're not healthy, we're going to see how that affects our profits. Yeah. So after after a few days of me kind of just pestering them and like telling management and things like I was uncomfortable, uh, I wrote an email to the CEO of the company because they encourage us to do that. And I got a response back from like his personal assistant or something like that. And was it just like a, was it a go fuck yourself stamp? No, no, it it? it wasn't a form letter. It was, it was nice in the sense of like, I can tell they like what they were saying was meant to be helpful. It really wasn't because I'm like, it was still patronizing enough. Sure. Uh, like at one point the person who wrote the letter, uh, said, you know, I know it's hard to work during stressful times. I remember working, you know, on the retail side of Lowe's. Oh, my God. After, they did after, that. They, they said, I remember working for the retail side of Lowe's after after 9-11 and how hard it was going to work that next day. And I responded, and I was like, like, respectfully, working after an isolated terrorist attack is very different than working with a general public pandemic. Not just that, but isn't it sort of a bit of like, well, I remember when I was a working stiff like you. Yeah. You too can climb the ladder. Yeah, that's but definitely like, like it's yeah. Okay. So uh, I remember and that was so then the day that uh, for Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf announced like at six o'clock that day, five or six o'clock on whatever day it was uh, that all non-essential businesses had to close. We got like major holiday sale busy as soon as they made the announcement. More and more people started rushing in and rushing in and rushing in. Now, was it for, you know, in your experience, and of course, you're just one person in the shop, but like, was it for essential things that they had reason to be concerned about? Or was there a little bit of that? But also, it was paint, it was blinds, it was, it was, if I'm going to be stuck at home, I want to have projects to do. Okay. Or, you know, the the begrudging husband who's like, oh, I'm going to be home, wife's going to, like, we get a lot of that crap. Um. So it, it was a lot of that, and um, by this point, you know, it, it was, uh, I think it was that day, 
I was scheduled till nine. We got so busy with so like I started counting non-essential people or people who weren't wearing a mask. Like, okay, you're not wearing a mask, and you're here shopping for for you know you're looking at carpet samples. You're not even here to buy today. You're browsing. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. There were also some employees, like your fellow coworkers, who were not wearing masks. Is that the case? Yeah. Or- so- so okay. at this point, masks weren't mandatory for like they weren't even providing masks in the store. Uh, this is when things first broke out. Okay. And then, but because I'd openly been you know very t- uh, talking to the store manager and other people above me, and again like they're they're nice people. They're working for the same company too. I understand they have people they have to answer to, and I'm not upset at them because none of this is their call. Right. Um, they created a thing where if you have a pre-existing uh, condition that could put you at greater risk due to COVID, uh, which I have in case of asthma, um, you could get two weeks emergency paid leave. So I took that and I was out of work for two weeks and they then extended that into another two weeks. So I was off work for a month because I think, uh, and I got paid and that was that was really great. I'm not, you know, I'm very thankful for that because um, I think the idea at the time was, okay, this will happen for a month and then it'll go away because you know, big, conser- big, relatively conservative hardware company. Uh, Lowe's has been in the news lately for doing some more lefty things, and those are good too, but it's a whole different thing. What uh, lefty things have they done? Uh, like they, um, our CEO um, is, is black and he has um, really spearheaded a lot of like, we want to donate to minority owned like businesses and things like that. And, okay. Um, so stuff, stuff like that. Um, and that is, you know, commendable. I will say that's really, you know, good for the company. And just, it's a good thing to do. But after I was off work for a month, um, I came back. And at this point now, uh, it was signs up all over the place that masks are mandatory. Uh, There's a random PA announcement that comes on talking about the importance of social distancing and washing your hands. Uh, The store did have masks, like, you know, paper masks and stuff for us to wear. And, um, but the problem was, even then, it was never enforced. It was... You know, the signs everywhere said, if, you know, to, you, you must wear a mask to enter the store. Uh, mask must be worn at all times for employees and customers. But if an employee, but to us, the message was, if an employee or customer is not wearing a mask, you're not allowed to address it or bring it up to avoid unnecessary confrontation. Now, I'm sure their official logic there was, you know, they're not trying to start a fight. I remember seeing a thing of like, I think it was somewhere in Michigan, like at a family dollar or do- one of those kind of places, somebody made someone leave because they weren't wearing a mask, and then they came back and shot them. Whoa, I hadn't heard that one. Look, wow, look it. it was it was Mich- it was Mich- I think it was Michigan, but I, I mean, you we- see a lot of. I mean, you saw that thing. I, I think it was in Georgia where the person was like, like I guess it was. Uh, I think it was at like a coffee place or a sandwich place. And the employee canceled somebody's order because they weren't wearing a mask. They're like, we cannot help you if you do not have a mask on. And uh, so they, you know, basically refused service. And I'm I'm guessing you couldn't see the employee, uh, but I'm guessing the employee was black because the customers started calling them racial slurs. Yeah. Um, and then you saw, I mean, there was that one thing that really went viral that's uh, in my neck of the woods in North Hollywood, uh, someone this person just went nuts in a Trader Joe's. You probably saw that video. Oh yeah, everyone saw that video. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's it but. was a lot of that, and and I, I would say it's been about seven to ten percent of customers not wearing masks. Most people are pretty good about it, mm-hmm. but still, in a situation like this, it only takes a small number to throw everything off. Right. Uh, right. Both with you know with in terms of employees or or customers. And I remember like the first day I came back from my break, the first customer I helped wasn't wearing a mask and he said to me this pandemic must be great for you guys i've been here more than the past month than i was all last year and that was when the mandatory stay at home order was still going and everything was closed the american way huh this yeah. must be great for you this yeah. must be great for you and because uh, because those profit margins are shared with the workers all the time this must be yeah. great for you and then the must- company mm. Yeah, and the company has done uh, the occasional thing of like, here's an extra, you know, few hundred dollars uh, as a thank you. And again, like that's appreciated, but it very much feels like cash money. It's the, you know, shut up and take your money. We know you're exposed. Uh, yeah. And, and but, you know, to be totally fair, that that is more than some corporations are doing. Oh, completely. Like I said, that like, is more. I mean, which is it's sad. I mean, yeah. it's sad. 
but I mean, the, the company's the company's not horrible. Like I'm not here to to scream and say they're you know they shouldn't exist. I just I'm worried about the people that work there and the people that shop there. Just you know, I'm I'm gonna pick humans over money, uh, basically. And which this, is, which is not the American way. Yeah, I've, I, I'm very aware of that. Uh, <laughs> so as, as someone who makes a lot more at their job uh, selling flooring than they ever did at their job taking care of disabled humans, I understand. That. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, basically, you know, since I went back, it, it took a while. Like we were having huge sales days, even when, for example, like none of our installers were open. So we, we had no revenue coming in from install jobs, but we were still beating our sales numbers from the previous year and, and having these huge record setting days. It was, it was like a major holiday every weekend. Um, occasionally they would have someone out front to, to count people. Uh, but that would be like for an hour or two on a busy Saturday. Otherwise it was just anybody come in whenever. Um, uh, and like I said, the big, the big thing is just the um, you know, not having masks and not being able to ad address it. Uh, the amount of pe maskless people I deal with every day bothers me. And th it's not just the people that don't wear the mask. It's the one who, like, I think they wear a mask to get into the store, and then they take it off, and they turn it into a chin strap, or they wear it as, like, a single earring, so it's just hanging down the one side. Because freedom. Yeah, and... Because I'm not allowed to say anything, I have to just, you know, politely try to like stand further away than I usually would when explaining the differences in carpet or, right. <laughs> or floor durability. Uh, and then they'll get real close and shove a phone up my face. You know, look at my picture of this. And like, okay, that's, you know, or the one time this person at least was nice about it. Somebody was like, here, talk to my mom and tried to push their phone on my face. I'm like, can, can you put it on speaker? Like, I don't want to get my face in your phone right now. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. Like, why? It's just, is this really the hill you want to die on? Yeah. And you're, you're not going to wear a mask. Uh, like, just, what are you proving? Yeah, well, and, and people do it because it's a, it is just a matter of, you know, to, like, to you and I, it's a matter of basic human civility. Mm -hmm. uh, of saying, I acknowledge you exist, and I exist, but you exist outside my own existence. Well, here's the thing, like, um, you might appreciate this. Um, so let's say somebody, they, they, you know, scientific consensus, medical consensus is, is saying that the mask is, is a good thing. I, I mean, the, the studies are out there and society has decided, yeah, we should be wearing masks. And it's like, okay, mask, great. All right. So you disagree with that for whatever reason, like, like, like you, the, the hypothetical you here, someone disagrees with that. They disagree with that science, scientific consensus for whatever reason, you know, and I disagree with that person, but just putting that aside and just saying, okay, they, they disagree with that. What are you like? Here's the thing. I'm an atheist, but when I'm walking around in December and I see Christmas decorations, or Hanukkah decorations, I don't point and go, I don't believe in this. I don't like this. I don't believe in this. This should be taken down. This should go away. I'm not for that either. I don't think any of this. Kids, it's not real. Like, I don't do that. You know why? Because why would why would I why would I do that to yeah. society? Like, why would I choose that hill to die on? You know what I say to people? I say happy holidays. Or if I know specifically what they celebrate, I say happy Hanukkah or Merry Christmas, whatever it may be. Yeah. That's what I do. Cause like, why, why would you pick that hill to die on now when, you know, I get, it's not the most perfect analogy cause there's, there's situations where religion is used to oppress other people. And that's a different story. But, <laughs> but I mean, just in, just in like, just in like the regular, for instance, when you're out in society, like, even if you disagree with it, why can you not just wear a mask just to be a cooperative member of society where it's like we're all in this together yeah there's there's nothing oppressive about putting a mask on yeah and and the way that uh my store and from what i understand most stores were running things uh would be setting aside the problems with like the policing system imagine like if we had like speed limit signs and they're not enforced mm -hmm. oh the sign's up you know you shouldn't go above 35 because little kids live on this street but if you're gonna go 80 no one's gonna stop you Right, right. Yeah. And again, why can't you just follow that for the goodness of society? It's like why no one has a problem wearing shirt and shoes 
to enter a restaurant or an establishment. No one's ever had, that's always been just sort of a thing just for common decency in society. Hey, hey, no shirt, no shoes, no service. That's the most common thing. No one's ever had a problem with that. Well, I'm sure somebody has somewhere at some point, but, but you know, generally no yeah. one's ever had a problem with that. Now it's like, hey, we're in a pandemic. Have a mask on your face. It helps. It helps slow the spread of this. And all these people are, are just, you know, choosing this is the hill to die on. Yeah. And, and so that's been just where like, I've been much more stressed than usual. Uh, I have like a major depressive disorder and that's been worse than usual from working just because, you know, it's, you can't relax. And then when you get home, it's okay. Hopefully I didn't get sick today. And because everything else is shut down, I can't go out and perform. I can't go see friends. And the amount of people that would come into a store like Lowe's to meet up just, Oh, Hey, yeah, I want to go see my friend and you know, Lowe's is open. So we'll go. It's a here. hangout for people. Yeah. Oh, Pete, definitely. If, if you're like a well-off middle-class white family, Lowe's is where you just go to kill some time, at least in this area. I am not hip to this subculture, and I, I feel like, I feel like I, I'm not I, missing anything. You're not, trust me. As someone who has to work with these people, um, <laughs> it, like some of the situations I've had of you know, spending literally 40 minutes helping someone decide between two shades of white paint back when I worked in that department, because... Like, this is a life or death, tears to the eyes, you know, I will be ruined if I don't get this perfect type situation. Um, people bring in their friends and, oh, I want to get there. I want, do you think this backsplash is nicer than this one? Or just, yeah. And then the amount of also just as a, as a white guy who works in a hardware store, uh, people generally assume I'm on uh, the traditional white guy in a hardware store side being, you know, leaning conservative. Uh, mm -hmm. so they feel very comfortable making more, uh, racist or sexist jokes to me because they assume I'm on their side and like, Oh, you have talked to the wrong leftist. You just got a job at a place like this. <laughs> yeah. Oh <laughs> and, yeah. And you know, I have to be, I have to be nice about it, but what do you usually do? Well, it, it depends. Uh, like I remember one time, uh, so th this was years ago. I'm at the I'm at the paint desk, and this old couple comes up to the desks and desk, and I, you know, do you folks need any help? And the old lady's like, No, no, I'm just gonna go look at some paint samples. And the, the husband stays at the desk, and I said, Well, I think also, you know, I can help you at help you with uh, why you're here at the desk. And he says, Nope, nope, I'm just the uh, N word in this situation. Oh wow! And I just oh. yeah, and I said, Oh, okay. Like I'm trying to, you know. And he goes, and I guess he thought I didn't get the joke. And he says, you know, because I'll be the one doing all the work. Oh, my God. And I, yeah, and so I said, yeah, yeah, I, I get what you're trying to say. And he goes, uh, I guess you're one of those polit politically correct types, huh? I said, I consider it more basic human civility, but, you know, call it what you will. Uh, Jeez. He responded by saying... Uh, well, I used to be a bus driver in the Hill District. The Hill District, Hill District is a historically black neighborhood. And, you know, they would call me names and spit on me. And I said, okay, I, I got once randomly jumped by three black guys on the street while trying to prevent a friend from committing suicide. I don't blame their race for it. Like, that's individuals. Mm -hmm. and, and he just goes, well, maybe you're just a better man than I am. And I looked him square in the face and just said, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what I can help you with. Yeah. Maybe that's what I can help you with, sir. Yeah. Not or, being a racist douchebag. I'm going to try to help you. Yeah. Or the amount of like, I remember when I first started, because I'm, you know, English major performer. I know nothing about hardware other than the things I've learned from working at a place like Lowe's for a long how'd, time. How'd you get the gig? I just needed the job. Okay. I, I, I quit my old job working in the group home and it was just they they were hiring for like a generic just we need part time people and they, and they put you in the paint department. They were like, you seem like an artsy fartsy type paint I, I, closest yes. we got. <laughs> yeah, like, do you want to work in paint? I mean, like you like, like a kiddie pool, or actually gonna mix it, or what are we doing here? You know, uh, but yeah. So I just I and then it was just a matter of like I I started at Lowe's part time when I went back to college to try to finish my degree because I had dropped out before. And then the same mental health issues kind of kicked up again, so I didn't finish. And then I just stayed out of, out of a matter of like, well, I don't want to quit this job just to go to another job like it, because at least I know how things are here. And there are some good people at like the store level. And it's just been a matter of trying to 
figure out other things since then. You know, I recorded an album last year. I was hoping that would do a lot more than it's done, but that's comedy. Uh, well, so let's go to present. So you yeah. were recently exposed to COVID. One of your coworkers, uh, and they, they won't tell you who specifically, but but one of your coworkers has tested positive for COVID and they made this announcement at your work. So, so the way this broke down was, let's see here, it's Friday. So this would have been Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. uh, it was around eight o'clock and I was helping a, a coworker, a coworker, a customer with some stuff. And the store manager comes over and pulls me aside and like throws another employee at this customer who doesn't know the department, but just, you know, you can take care of this person. I've got to talk to Zach. And my first thought is like, oh, because I, I put in a request actually with a note from my doctor to go down to four days a week instead of five because of mm -hmm. just how bad things are right now. Uh, so we, we sat down and uh, he let me know that someone I work in close proximity with uh, has come down with a COVID diagnosis. They, you know, they can't tell me who. Uh, they think my last exposure to this person would have been about a little over a week ago as of Wednesday. Uh, and so based on that, the fact that uh, one of the people that works in my department generally doesn't wear a mask at work because he said he just doesn't like them. Uh, I don't think it's a political thing. He just is just doesn't like them okay. and uh, called off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And last week was on vacation. Uh, if they're if they're estimating that I was last exposed a little over a week ago and he hasn't been in a little over a week, I can I can put two and two together, especially right. because of this, the close proximity thing. Mm hmm. Uh, so I, uh, so, you know, we, we sat down and we talked a bit and I just, I remember I laughed at one point because, you know, I'm the person who's been speaking up about this since the whole thing started and saying, we need to be doing more. We need to be taking this seriously. Um, and then he uh, had me into my locker and walked me outside. Cause I guess like, like if you get fired, they walk you out. Cause I'm sure they don't want you like stealing things. I, I don't understand the walking you out like you got fired because we're sending you home in case you're sick yeah that's a little i, I yeah that, maybe, that's an odd policy but yeah okay. maybe they're afraid you're gonna like lick the keyboards and vengeance or something i don't know like but, you do like you yeah, do it's, it's a thing. common thing usually usually you lick the keyboard that's usually your go-to they're, they're quite delicious to be fair uh, <laughs> but so so as he's walking me out i said to him so uh earlier that day on wednesday pennsylvania declared Masks mandatory on public places again mm -hmm. after after closing the bars and a lot of things because again people are just not taking this stuff seriously. Uh, so I said to the manager, you know, are we going to actually start enforcing this mask stuff? And he's like, well, what do you mean? And I said, we have signs up saying that we're you know not allowed signs up saying we require masks, but we're not allowed to address it when customers don't wear it. We're not enforcing it. And he said, well, it's, it's not up to us to enforce it. I'm like, well, who, who, who's, it, who's it up to to enforce it? Yeah, it's you know, still your the, store. Yeah, we're the, we're the business. Do you, what, are you going to hire, like, an armed guard to hang out and be, you are maskless? And, you know, because that armed guard's probably not wearing a mask either, knowing armed guards most of the time. Um, and I, I said to him, okay, listen, like, when I come back, if... I'm dealing with a customer that is not wearing a mask. I will politely tell them I can, I'll be glad to help you, but you need to put a mask on. Mm -hmm. Once you've got a mask on, I'll do my usual thing. I'm, I'm good at my job. Like I've been given awards for being a good salesperson because it's performing. It's an act. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Uh, and I just said, and he said, you know, well, just tread lightly, you know, be careful. And I imagine some of that comes from the, you know, we don't want someone to pick a fight with you. Uh, sure. No, I get because it. I, I have had a, the occasional customer threaten to kick my ass in the past. Uh, not not even because of pandemic things, just like, oh, they accidentally took the wrong stove to your house. And now you're threatening to come and beat me up. OK, that's great. You, you're you're wow. to put on you. Uh, so it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a tread lightly. It was, it was no, like, no, oh, his, tread his lightly. Was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was tread lightly. So it was. It was it was that it was that thing of you know again I I understand he's he's the store manager and he's got people he has to respond to right he's working a job as well and I, even though you're running the store I don't think you're that autonomous it's still following all the corporate things and you don't really have any leeway on anything right so I think it was it was uh, you know they're they're definitely afraid of upsetting customers my guess is you know the official logic of that is. We don't want to cause fights, but the unofficial the unofficial reason is we don't want to lose customers because the 
we, the company is trained to be afraid of customers where if you complain about things, the, the amount of things they, they will give away. Like I remember years ago when I was working in the paint department, a guy was walking into the store, didn't trip over anything, just on his own, dropped a gallon of paint in our entryway that he was bringing in and then asked us if we would replace for free the gallon of paint he dropped. And we did. Wow. Man, so so wait, what all can I get from Lowe's? What am I missing out on? Just... <laughs> if I write a strongly worded letter, what can yeah. I get? What if all... somebody what if somebody writes a strongly worded letter about the lack of masks they've seen in the store? What if a customer I... complains that I... people aren't wearing masks? Well, then what do they do? Maybe encouraged... they should just stick with a policy. Yeah, I've encouraged that. Um and it's, it's just, it's a thing of, uh, so yeah, so I got sent home on Wednesday and mm -hmm. then yesterday, uh, during the day, I got a call from the store manager during the day. And, uh, was he like, he said, Zach, are you still treading lightly? Checking in, <laughs> no, making he, sure you're lightly treading. <laughs> no, we, we had a, we had a good talk and, and, you know, he said, uh, you know, I have to give you some bad news. And I said, before you go any further, like, you know, I understand, I hope you understand I'm not mad at you because I know you're the messenger in the situation, just in the same way, like. As the guy who sells carpet, I have to be the person to call and say, hey, the thing you ordered got discontinued. You know, somebody's right. going to scream at me because they don't see me as a person. They see me as just a means to an end. And I try to look at everybody as people. So when I got sent home on Wednesday, uh, they said I would be paid for the amount paid for all the time I'm missing uh, because of, you know, getting being forced to go home and not be at work because of exposure at my job. Uh, apparently. The company has set aside a, cert a set amount of time that every employee is allowed to have to be paid to miss work because of COVID things. And because I took that time when all this started that was offered to me, I am now out of time to miss work and be paid for COVID related things. Even though so, I was they're, so they're not paying you. Uh, I have vacation time left. So okay. uh, and because the world's on fire, and I'm not going anywhere anyway. Uh, I'm able to. But if I didn't have vacation time left, then, yeah, I'd be I'd just be missing work, forced to miss work and not get paid right now. Uh, it's unreal. Because, yeah, so that's that's one things I had said to the manager when we talked. I said, like, I understand this isn't your fault, but just so I'm clear, the place that I'm working to make money for during the pandemic and being exposed or not enforcing masks is going to put a cap on how much they're willing to help me if I get exposed to the illness that they, because they're not enforcing things. And it's just, uh, you can't tell. I'm wearing a Catch-22 shirt as we talk because I felt that was appropriate for the situation. Um, yeah. And that's, that's, like, that was kind of the final straw for me of, okay, I really want to speak out now. I want to talk about this more because up, up until this point, I, I did have that thought of, okay, you know, it's, it sucks and it's a business and I get it, but at least it seems like they are doing things to, to take care of the employees. Like I said, they were giving some extra money. They were, uh, you know, doing offering time and things like that. But the fact that there's a cap on it when this is a situation where short of, you know, a, a vaccine or cure, this is not going away anytime soon. This is, mm -hmm. this is the world until there's a, there's a breakthrough and they're, they're not planning for that. They're running it just day to day business. And, you know, this is a problem in the same way that like, Oh, we had a slow night because the Penguins are in the playoffs. <laughs> like, well, this is, I, I think the bigger theme here is that, you know, this is a horrible policy procedure, but this is business as usual. Yeah, that's, and that's this is the American way. And if we lined up all the corporate cultures in this country, Lowe's would not be among the worst. They'd no. be far from it. So this goes to show you just how much of a capitalism death cult yeah. this country is. And, and first of all, I, I misspoke a little bit there. It's not fair to call the United States a country. We're yeah. not a country. We're a corporation with state lines. Yeah. But that just shows how much of a capitalism death cult this corporation with state lines is. I, I, I mean, it, it's a total corporate coup. No, I, I completely agree. Like, I... Every now and then you work a place like that, customers say, do you like working here? And I don't, and I'm honest to a fault most of the time. So I'd say, 
Like, honestly, all my complaints about working here are the same complaints I would have in any other retail situation. Yeah. You know, it sucks missing holidays. The hours are garbage. But as a whole, you know, I didn't have, have a particular problem with the company. But with how they have handled this and what just feels like negligence. And I, 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 I've been, I, I follow the news a lot. Uh, every now and then I'll just look up Lowe's and like the Google News search to see if there's other places. And you'll see like, oh, in this state, um, you know, the, the government ordered places like Lowe's that have essential services. You could stay open, but you could only sell the essential things. So and some they, Lowe's are actually doing that. But only because the state's making them. Okay. Yeah, like I forget I forget what state it was. So for example, like in, in this one state, you know, you could go in and yeah, you could buy a fridge or you could buy a water heater, but the paint department was entirely closed off, for example. Um, because the state decided, well, that's not fair to like independent paint shops that can't be open. Mm. Or that like makes our sense. Garden, Yeah, like our lawn yeah, like that garden, makes sense. Yeah, like the lawn and garden center, you know, that's the thing of people coming in just the amount of people who would who still are, are coming in just saying they're they're bored and they want when we get the lockdown just every other customer said i'm here because i want to get out of the house and you're open or some variation wow and How, what, I, just wear a shirt that says i don't give a fuck about anyone except myself exactly and i I'm care about nobody except me yeah and they're there to Unreal. buy flowers it's uh, you know, I, it, just the, the amount of things where it's, you know, I am bored. And then when, when the money came out from, from the government, we got even busier because now everybody had an extra thousand dollars to spend on house stuff to do. So we got, so, so much of that went into, into the company. Oh my God. So right now I am, uh, I'm out of work at least for another few days. They, cause they think my two week exposure time would be up in a few days. Uh, I'm getting a test tomorrow because I had to jump through some hoops, not because of work, just to find a place to get a test. Right. It's uh, yeah, it takes. I don't have, I, yeah, I don't have symptoms. I feel fine. So I'm just mostly trying to focus on that. Um, I don't. And I even, I even said to the, like the store manager when we talked yesterday, I said, you know, I really need to evaluate if I feel comfortable staying with this company at this point. Um, and it's not it's not his fault. It's not anybody at the store level's fault. It's just a matter of ethics. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's a retail job. It's, it's stressful and it sucks a lot of the time, but that's just, that's the job. Um, I but, mean, that was in, that was in the description when you applied, right? Like it was just yeah. like stressful, sucks a lot of the time, but uh, you know, this is what's available in this yeah. country. You got to deal with it. Yeah. But at the same time, like, like I mentioned uh, before I worked at Lowe's, I worked at a group home taking care of intellectual disabled adults that job, I got paid 10 bucks an hour to be a nurse, a keeper, a friend, a cook, uh, you know, everything. And so compared to that job, yeah, Lowe's was still better. It was much less stress. I, like when I worked in the paint department, I never, I would say I never have to worry about coming in and finding out like the red tint didn't get its heart medication yesterday. And now I have to <laughs> rush to like make an appointment or something. Mm -hmm. But if this is how it's going to be in terms of, you know, taking care of the employees and, and choosing major profits over safety, then I, I can't consciously stay, stay there. So I'm, I'm still technically employed there. I'm waiting to hear back about when I can return and I got to talk to my job and, and see what happens. But I, I'd be surprised if I stay at this point. Um, then it's just a matter of trying to make sure I can get unemployment or something like that until I find a new job. Because finding a new job right now is going to be great as well. Um, are you? Are you? Um, I mean, you mentioned you kind of want to share this story. Have you been reaching out to the local media? Have you been uh, reaching out elsewhere? Yeah, I've uh, I've contacted some people at uh, the local NPR station and uh, one of the local newspapers. A friend of mine got me in touch with uh, someone who writes for Vice, so I've been in, I've sent him some emails. Uh, I'm looking for other avenues. All right. Well, well, well. Tell the people advice. They get your news on with Ron broke it first. All right. No, you, Let you, them know. You're, Let you're them doing. know. <laughs> but and the thing is, really, it doesn't surprise me. Just looking at the way the company is is set up, it, it's it's a retail chain. So they are there to make sure the employees don't talk to each other about how much they make. Don't. I, I remember when I first got hired like the first or second day you're just watching videos all day and every single video is the same pleasant narrator voice about taking care of customers and only at two points do they go into serious narrator voice 
The first time if they go you try to unionize, your firstborn child will be sacrificed to the gods. Basically, yeah. So the first time you get serious narrator voice is the importance of safety around like the trash compactor and the cardboard baler. Which is reasonable. Because that can kill you. Right. And the second time they get into serious narrator voice is about the importance of not talking to union people. <laughs> don't it's, die. That's bad. Bad look for us if you die. Also, don't. Ask yeah. for worker rights. That's also a bad look for us. Unions really, it comes want, down to our bottom line. That's all we care about. Unions want you to play in the Baylor, basically. <laughs> like the message. Or uh, for a while, this the program doesn't even exist anymore, but there used to be a program called the Voice Team, where it's supposed to be the voice of the employees getting together to talk about things and be able to pass the messages up to corporate. And, you know, I guess that's their little like, look, you don't need a union. You can just independently do this thing. And, uh, I got asked to be on the voice team at one point at my old store. Uh, I was there for two meetings and then I was not welcome back because, <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, reading I reality, rest thoughts. Cause They're in like, reality, the, uh, the voice team was a, was a party planning committee. Uh, if, uh, so the voice team, we weren't supposed to have the store manager in there. So you could talk freely independently. Our store manager sat through both meetings that I was part of. Um, and anytime someone raised a concern, um, you were just told you're being negative and it's not helping, <laughs> you know, like, Hey, this thing's Great. really understaffed and, you know, we're struggling to cover like the way the schedule is set up. You've got me covering six aisles by myself on a weekend. Listen, Zach, none of this was in the press release. Shut up. Exactly. You're not welcome here anymore. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, that's that's not. I, I can't. I can imagine that's not unique to this kind of job. It's not. Right. Well, it's not unique to that company. Yeah. I mean, this is this is the work culture. Like, like, like. It's yeah. not like it's not like Lowe's is some unique case. This is the corporate culture in the United States. Yeah. I don't. I don't hate the company. I hate the system the company exists in. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so Zach, before we go to the patrons, and I know you said you want to hang out for the duration, which is going to be a good time, but, um, let people know where they can find you and learn more about you. All right. So, uh, I have an album out you can find, uh, called brains are weird. It's on Bandcamp, iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, all that stuff. Um, if you do buy it, try to buy it on Bandcamp because that gets me a little bit more money than the other things. Uh, I've got a YouTube channel, um, just, uh, Zach Funk comedy. I'm also the co-host of a channel called is it worth a sandwich where uh my roommate and i play video games and review them but also do uh and then compare them to a sandwich and say oh, are you better off spending money on food or a game uh or how you know, often does sandwich win it depends we we try to do you specify find, the sandwich yeah no we specify the sandwich we either okay. buy or make a sandwich we try to find something that's like around the same cost as like you know because the, the the idea came from back when we were college roommates and it was like all right I can go. To, I can get dinner tonight, or I can go buy like a ten dollars used PlayStation game. Which do I feel like doing? Uh, <laughs> I'm, not, so, I'm not a gamer, so I can't relate. I'm not. I'm not a video game guy, so yeah. I, I would just be food 100 percent of the time. So yeah. So that. So that was kind of our 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 metric of, you know, was the it doesn't was, it doesn't matter that it's like the greatest game you ever played. It's just eh, would you have preferred to have eaten dinner? Um, <laughs> But, but we do some other stuff too on there. Like that's make- such a Pittsburgh thing too that it's sandwich because like <laughs> yeah. like Pittsburgh they know their sandwiches in yeah. in Pittsburgh like they they do the sandwich right. That's why I'm like you got to specify which sandwich. Like you got to oh, yeah. say if this is the uh, sandwich we're talking. Yeah, we also Good. make uh, like nerdy themed cocktails and do stuff with that. Uh, we've done like Doctor Who themed cocktails, Avengers, Gravity Falls, Adult Swim. Uh, we'll do little sketches and stuff every now and then. Um, like I have a fun video up there where it's it's a conspiracy theory I thought of one day at work after sleeping 45 minutes that Marge and Homer don't have any legitimate children of their own. <laughs> just, yeah, it, again, it's just, it's a joke thing, obviously. Um, but yeah, so that's the thing you can check out on Is It Worth a Sandwich? Uh, but yeah, if you can, just check out my album. Uh, there's, I, just knowing Ron's audience, uh, there's definitely some stuff you'd like on there. The, uh, the album opens with a... Um, anti-capitalist comic book joke so you know it's nice and, <laughs> there's, there's, there's a lot of there's definitely political stuff on there and some lefty stuff and just some i think good fun jokes and stories but i think knowing you and your audience i think they'd like my stuff all right man well thanks so much for coming and uh we're gonna we'll get we're gonna go to the patrons now but yeah check out zach zach funk comedy 
Boomtown. And uh, weird. yeah, dude, keep uh, keep fighting the good fight, man. Organize yeah. a big strike. <laughs> Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make.